<laughs> We're good. How's everyone doing? You changed. Welcome, social social media two hundred and two. Um, I'm Andrew Zimmern. To my right, Chris Costantino. To his right, John Besh. Um, <laughs> social media. It's a powerful um, drug. It is a power. It is a powerful drug. Um, I'm addicted to it. I know half the people in this room by their, you know, Twitter and Instagram feed names. Uh, there's about uh, so sad. 15, so sad. I stopped counting, there's about 15 people in this room who I follow, who follow me, some privately, some publicly. Um, and I guess we're all here today to talk about the impact of social media on our lives as culinary professionals and how we use it, both personally and professionally, to uh, drive attention to our brands, highlight projects that we want to do, focus and refocus our attention, our energy on different facets of our career building. Um, I'll throw out a couple ideas first. Should I go first? Softballs, please. Softballs. Yeah. John, Chef John Besh just joined Instagram how many days ago? Uh, three days Active ago. Active on I Twitter, think. but <laughs> it was very, in I just got a fax machine. I feel machine. like I belong. My fax machine doesn't have paper, but I just got a fax machine, so. Um, I, I really, I think it's, no, I didn't. My dad did that. Three years ago, my father called the house and said, I just want to give you our new, we have a devoted line for our fax machine. And I just, I laughed at him. Um, I am not a, uh, I'll give you a little three minute overview. I'm not a tech guy. I'm not really a tech guy. Um, I have a cell phone, I have a laptop. I'm not necessarily the, the, the biggest first adapter, um, but I am ferociously, um, uh, active in social media, um, which has its danger points, as we'll probably get to later when it comes to sponsored uh, tweets and things like that, where you can start to alienate the people who follow you. Um, but I, I fell in love with it when I discovered Twitter. Um, I do not do Facebook. Um, I have a very active Facebook community because I push all of my uh, social and digital stuff onto Facebook, Facebook through a uh, cloning system that we use. Um, I do write 75%, 80% of all my own tweets. Um, I don't, excuse me. I don't, um, I preset the tweets that alert my fan base to a new book drops today. Uh, premiere of the show drops tonight. Um, I'm cooking a dinner with Chris at his restaurant in San Francisco. If I have things like that, that I know are sort of the informational 411 type tweets, it's just good to make sure that I don't forget to do it because I'm a bright, shiny objects person. So I like to, I use Hootsuite to preset my tweets and I have someone in my office who has one laptop, one computer in our office that is always following all the activity on our social media. Um, we have to do that in my office because we've grown to, I think it's almost three, mil three million uniques a day aggregate across all seven of our social media, media tools and our websites. Um, so the total number of impressions that we have uh, in the Andrew Zimmern world is really profound, even though we only have, um, I don't know, 80,000 people following me on Facebook. Um, I have another, I think, 750,000 on the Bizarre Foods Facebook account. So when you sort of add all those things together, it gets, it gets pretty hefty. Um, I think the last thing, just in a general sense, uh, before I pass the microphone to my teammates, is that for me, the real pleasure in why I'm so active in social media is because it's how I get my information and keep up with a lot of my friends. Um, my godson, uh, seven, six years ago, whenever Twitter started, um, he and his friends used it to keep tabs on each other at school. They used it the way Twitter sort of first got conceived, which was as a way for them to communicate with each other in shorthand as a private community. If they all liked each other and used the tools on Twitter the right way by putting dots before people's names, all the little Twitter tricks people use, they could literally tell them, hey, I'm at the library. You could tell your 20 friends, I'm at the library till 10 o'clock and then going to this bar to have a pitcher of beer. And when Ethan clued me in on that, you know, and I, you know, I love talking to young folks being such an old fart. I literally, something clicked in my brain. I said, that's how I want my friends. I'm time poor. I want to be able to know what my friends are up to and communicate 
with them. And I probably, you know, Chris is a good friend of mine. I speak to him on the phone once a month. But because we follow each other in a couple social media things, we will actually talk to each other. Um, both That's how we met. It is how we met. That's how I met you. It is how we met. Via Twitter. Great point. So, excuse me? At Andrew Zimmern. At Awful Chris. That's at Chef, Chef John Besh. Um, but the, the, the beauty of it for me is I started it as a social tool and then began to engage my fan base in it. And I, I just have a sneaky feeling that because of that, it helped make, just speaking for myself, my feed's really genuine because I'm, very, I'm actually active on it and fascinated by it. And just like my TV product, I think that comes across. I think you know when someone on a magic box in your, in your living room is being disingenuous or just you know, reading off some you know, pre-scripted playlist. Um, so I adore social media. We'll dive into some different aspects of it. And Chris has some cool show and tell. And like, like social media, I think this needs to be a conversation. Um, and uh, I'm dying to hear what you have, folks have to say. So you have some, uh, yeah. something you'd like to start with? You know, I started uh, on Instagram, uh, excuse me, on Twitter probably two months after it started. Um, ironically, the, the founder of Twitter lived two doors away from the restaurant, unbeknownst to me. Um, it's a really great tool to access your customer base, your guests, um, your friends all around the country. Um, I would have in-depth recipe conversations with Rene Redzepi at Noma over blood. You actually, you chimed in on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, we were having a discussion about blood soup, and I'm surely not going to make that call all the way to Copenhagen and have you know, a 40-minute conversation about a recipe. But what it did is allows everybody to see what each other are doing, share ideas, um, share food concepts, share what you're doing at the restaurant. How do you how do you drive business? How do you drive media uh, that social media to have a final outcome at your restaurant? And I think with us at Encanto, uh, we have an odds and ends board. It's a chalkboard, limited items. We take a picture of it at the beginning of dinner service. I take a picture of it on Instagram. It links through Twitter, and on Instagram, I have the highest following in the Bay Area. I think it's like 25,000 followers. And so that switches in and clicks over, just like Andrew was talking about. We link everything through. Uh, and then it hits Twitter. And I will see instant results. I will see guests come in and order that specific dish they saw, whether it's on the chalkboard or the actual physical dish. And that is a really great asset, you know, especially if you only have two of some item. So we'll do a gigantic tuna head, massive. You know, we'll roast a whole tuna head. We have one. I can guarantee I can sell it out in under 30 minutes once the door's open because I'll take a picture of it before service. I'll take a picture of it on the chalkboard, and people will run for it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, people like Andrew will get on and comment about it and say, oh, "I wish I could be there today," or you know, we utilize. And are you all familiar with Vine? Okay, Vine is great. It allows you to really stop motion anime style social media, and I started building dishes with it. And I have a couple of examples. Um, you know, once. You know, pass over to John, but I'll show you how building a dish on Vine with that stop, you know, seven second video. I mean, this, this is really simple. You know, 140 characters and a photograph on Twitter, a seven second video on Vine. <coughs> you can do it, a chimp can do it. You know, it's not that hard. And I am dyslexic, I have ADD, I have the attention span of a gnat, and I'm able to do it. And uh, it becomes very addicting. Like Andrew said, I mean, I'll put out, you know, 25 pictures, but I've been, you know, kind of being a little reserved this weekend and saving them up. So <laughs> when I hammer them out at the right time. And it, that's another thing is key. When do you launch them? When do you do them? Late at night, it really doesn't work unless you're trying to, you're trying to attack, uh, you know, European markets. If you want to do, you know, the U.S., you always do it earlier in the day, depending on where you're looking to hit in the country. There's a lot of little, little things to think about. You know, I get more comments when I put on something at 11.30 at night from England, Spain, and Copenhagen than I do from anybody in the States. And I've seen that. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty fun. John? Now, here's the anti-guy. <laughs> I'm the anti-Chris. But you wouldn't know it with my pants today. Um, yeah, I, I, I look at all of this, and I look at just rampant narcissism in our society, and I think, does anybody really want to hear from me and I, oftentimes I say, nah, probably not. 
And I still look at the fact that I'm a cook. And what I do is I please people through my restaurants. And I, I train and inspire chefs. And, and then I started thinking about this other way. It, it started looking at it differently and that this can be a tool. And if I think of it in terms, I love cocktail parties. And I love to have a couple drinks with friends. And so I started thinking about this in terms of, well, I'm just going to handle my feeds as if I'm having small talk with friends. And it's, I don't want to say, like, look at what I'm doing. Hey, I'm sitting next to this guy. And instead, it's like, oh, wow, well, you know, I found this great restaurant today. Click, let's take a picture and send it out. Then the girls in my office are all like, well, why don't you join, you know, um, this and join that, and then da 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 da. I'm like, well, I just really, I'm comfortable with Twitter, and you know, I can tweet, and it mm -hmm. goes straight to Facebook. And those that want to follow Facebook, kind of get a feel for like who I am and what I'm all about, and the things that I love, and things that I want to inspire people to do. And so, um, go to Ralph Brennan's restaurant, take a picture, had a wonderful meal, blah 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 blah. People get it, and it's like useful information and kind of like go-to stuff, and. But I do get where you're coming from, and it is extremely handy, but I just feel like it's really, you've got, it's a commitment, and you're committed to it. Oh, I, yeah, it, it is, that is the thing. If you start this as a restaurant or as a person, and you are trying to drive people to see who you are or what you're doing. Poor fella. Come on in. Hey, come on. Come on, don't be scared. Uh, he you heard do, cocktail party. And you he have to commit to it, and it is a true commitment. I mean, I was actually, I said it just a few minutes ago, I was actually not been putting out a lot of pictures, and I was like, wow, I, and then I get a message from the guys at the restaurant, are you all right? Yeah. They wanted to make sure I was See, okay. See, and I start posting things, and Zimmern's like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? Are you which actually one, doing that? I want to say, here's, here's the great thing. I, I'm listening to you guys talk about it, and I'm so filled with such great ideas because we all tell stories different ways, right? Uh, teaching we have a fan base that wants to know what we're doing because we've established ourselves at a certain level within our, uh, within our lines of work. And I think most fascinatingly, it becomes the, mo it, this is the extension, the marketing extension of our, of, I mean, just let's just talk about our professional lives of the restaurant, of the, you know, anything that you do in touch with events, with books, whatever, without social media, you are missing out on capturing and relating in a very personal way to the people that are your P1 consumers of your product. We, um, I've, I've had the great fortune of making a lot of television with both of these guys on, on my show. And when we were down doing a, uh, a, a third coast show, I did some stuff with John. And I made, and Vine had just started, and I made a Vine, one of my first Vine videos was of you doing one of the duck dishes that we did, like, duck, like, five ways. And, you know, it was one of the, just like, I mean, I mean you know, I, I make all these vines, no one really gives a crap. 36 people are like, hey, now I have a pretty big social media following. No one cares about me doing the fun jump ropey thing. But the minute I touch with something that's on brand, I'm taking you somewhere you can't go into his kitchen. And I'm showing the world, here's John, you how to slice and plate that duck dish. In seven seconds. In seven seconds. Six. And you can do just about six. anything and in I, seven and seconds. I, and, I, and, and I think I, 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 think I tagged it, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was the sorghum uh, oh, blanched, roasted, whole roasted right. duck. Yep, I saw that one. <laughs> Worth the trip. <laughs> Worth the trip to the restaurants just for that. But it was like people freaked out because it looked like the duck that you want to know how to do. And so it's a way to reach people in a very profound way. I pay very close attention to who retweets and who responds to what. And my office, uh, they're, they're used to the Monday morning Q&A for me about what was most popular, what was most liked, because your fans will tell you within your own lives, businesses, or your friends what they want to see and get from well, I think that's a really, you know, vine, like I said. And I'll show an example in a second. But we, I get a lot of questions. Why don't you actually do that now? Why don't yeah, I do it now? It. All right. So I get a lot of questions at the restaurant on uh, butchery, putting together dishes. Bear with me. Let's see if I find the right one. So we have a pasta extruder. It's all about putting together different dishes. So what I'm going to do is hit this one here. Um, he's very prepared. I, <laughs> is this going to work? So 
We did oxtail porcini pie. Very simple, just, just quick, 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 you just hold down. Um, we sold out, uh, you only saw six there, we made eight. We sold all six in 45 minutes. Does everybody know how Vine works? Tell us Raise about Vine. Vine. Vine is an app created by Twitter. It's a social media tool and it is a, uh, it's a stop motion camera app on your phone. You hold the screen and it rolls tape. You pull it off and it stops rolling. And Here's so, a good one. This, this, Here's a good one. Yeah. This, so I did a stop motion on how to clean crabs. That went over like a fart in church. Um, I got more angry, more angry letters about that. How to take the face off, pull off the gills, pull yeah. off the back. And everybody's like, you're horrible. But I got two questions. I got soft shell crabs. And somebody said. That's one thing I love about your social media outreach yep. is that it sparks controversy at every I know, turn. You, you can't, Absolutely. You have to be who you are. And to me, it's really important that I continue to be who I am. I'm not going to change my voice. I'm not going to change my direction. And I think that's what makes it, you know, a really viable uh, use of a tool. You know, I wish. I, they're great. I wish I had. Uh, oh, here's a good one. So this one, here's another good one. This we had three, three half pig heads. So graphic. <laughs> but again, but you it sell is, them out like that. It's, it's pretty quick. But that's a, that's a mar you keep saying sell them out. It's a, that for you is your nightly marketing tool. Yeah. To get people who are into that kind of food excited. You know, there is, there are other ways that Want to make one? Sort of go, yeah, you should make one so you can put it up there because right. not everyone so is how many, following So how many me. Vine followers do you have versus Twitter? Uh, I got to look. Let's see. So Twitter, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. so I have like one section of my phone that's all. Um, I have 188,000 followers for Opal Chris. And then. Um, it's a very large number. It's no Justin Bieber. No, sorry. <laughs> 25K on um, Instagram. There are, there are ways to, you know, I use Vine. I take pictures uh, on the road when we're making the show, post them to give people a behind the scenes because our fans want to see how our show is made. I then can do more tweets, Instagrams, and Vines with them when I'm, uh, when we're about to go to premiere. So on a Monday night when our show's at 9 o'clock, I will, you know, start my own personal marketing campaign to my fan base to remember to tune in or DVR. And then the interesting thing, kind of like what uh, Chris does with the odds and ends board, is if I'm somewhere, I know the order of acts that my show is, is created because I'm writing it too. So it doesn't matter where I am in the world, I can live tweet my own show and interact with my fans in a very, very direct way. And it's almost like I'm, they're watching the show with me because they're tweeting their friends like, holy shit, did you see what, you know, he's, he just ate that, you know, fermented, you know, porpoise anus. And I can sit there and see thousands of people talking about it when they're using the Bizarre Foods hashtag. And then I can say, yeah, it wasn't that bad. And people freak out. It's like I'm on the couch next to them. It's a very, very amazing when, when they call it social media, I always try to remember it's a social world that we're in. It brings us closer together. And anything that can break down that wall with my fans or you with your customers or whoever, you with your friends, and I don't know what your businesses are, I'm dying to know, um, I think it becomes a very, very, very potent tool. And it has grown exponentially for me. What started out as a small, dedicated fan base has expanded to Millions of people touching my social media and website every single day. Which is, which for someone who has, I, I really, honest to gosh, I, Bizarre Foods is a small cable TV show on a middling sized network, but my reach and Q rating is as if I was on broadcast television, and I think it's be, I, I think one of the reasons is because of the social media. Hey, it's that relationship that you build. Exactly. Here you go, Izzy. It, it's like so regulars just, so in your restaurant. A, so I just took Vine. I just made a quick Vine video right now. So it can be, I mean, you can put sound on it, you know, just make it laugh. <laughs> Great shot of Great you. Great shot of myself. But, you know, it's, it's really two seconds. It's easy to do. The, how many people here are primarily on Facebook? I'm just curious. 
Anyone here exclusively on Facebook? Cool. I'm more on Facebook than on Facebook. You're more on Facebook. I don't do it at all. And I, I really have to tell you, there are over a billion people on Facebook, and we cannot negate the fact that people are doing this. And yeah. That's correct. And is it work? Yes. That's correct. But the fact that he handles it, they handle it themselves, is truly the best way. The interesting, the interesting thing for people to remember, um, I, I spend a lot of time traveling. Um, more people in Africa have cell phones than have electricity. Mm -hmm. huh. That is true. Okay? More people in Africa have cell phones than have electricity. It is the most powerful, and that with third and fourth world issues, even second world issues. Every single man, woman, and child in Vietnam has a small phone that is a smart device on a lanyard around their neck. More people in Vietnam have a cell phone than have their own bedroom. Okay, These are very, very profound ideas about the world as it's changing and how you relate to people. Um, there was, <laughs> it is, it is, it's such a powerful tool. I know I was talking to someone who was in the audience last night as we were getting ready to uh, do an event up at the top of the mountain, and I don't do Facebook, and neither does he, because both of us, I, I'll, I'll tell on myself, I won't tell on Hugh, but I'm I don't want, uh, everyone is always telling me to shut up at meetings. My wife is always telling me to shut up at dinner parties. <laughs> My agents always tell me to sh talk less. I mean, everyone in my world tells me talk less. So, <laughs> so you get that too. I do. Your wife tells you that. Well, it, it, um, but but Twitter is ideally suited for me because it's a hundred. Like you said, it's 140 characters. I need to edit myself. And with Facebook, it's not that I don't like it. It's why I have everything linked to Facebook. I believe in its power. You can ramble. But for me. I get lost. I mean, I'd be there for three hours connecting who's talking to who. Yeah, I get really lost, just myself personally. Most of your end users are on Facebook. Oh, absolutely, which is why I make sure everything is on Facebook and I stay active in the Facebook community. We run You just link it all through. But a lot of people don't, and I love people's opinion, and I'm not a moderator, and I'm not yeah. part of this. Do, I have been told that when I link my clients from, from Twitter to Facebook or Facebook to Twitter, the end user, the Twitter user does not like it, especially because you're not on Facebook. So but I am, but I am on Facebook because we that. make sure we make sure to stay relevant to our Facebook audience by running Facebook promotions, giveaways, Facebook chats, all the ways in which we can utilize Facebook, Google Plus, uh, Google Chat. I mean, there's so many different ways you can engage your audience. You can host, put up a sign in a restaurant that says we're hosting a Google chat this coming Saturday at one o'clock. It'll start with 10 people, maybe five, maybe just your kids. Uh, but it will grow where your customer base is reacting and, and that's interacting what I really, I, it, with And you. that's one tool that I've really enjoyed because it is very interactive. It's just not me saying, oh yes, look at what I'm doing now, but it's like, let's have a conversation. Let's all get involved in it. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how many people that brings together. Yeah. I, I think you're gonna be, you're, you're so creative and you have so many smart people in your organization and your attitude about food and your fan base is so much a part of who you are and comes from your heart. You, I, it's gonna be fascinating having this conversation with you a year from now to see how taking that little camera into your kitchens and showing people, you know, show them how to shuck an oyster, show them how to make a root, show them how to do those kinds of things. It's an amazing part and parcel of what you're only now doing through cookbooks. Because you have, how many cookbooks do you have? Three. Three, and there's another one coming out. Right. Right. So it's it's the new way of people in getting that same stuff. Because I, I know you. You will sit there and talk to me about flatware and plates and the guy who tipped your photography for the new book with no artificial light. I mean, we spent an hour talking about it. I know how much you love that. And it's so cool to be able to do that yourself as a hobby. Because I, I don't do camera stuff, but I love playing around with it on Instagram and Vine and any other sort of, you know, uh, what is it, hipster, hipster? So let's talk about the drawbacks to it all. 
I think, great idea. Here, here's a good thing. You know, earlier today we we told everybody we were coming, but I announced it on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get a lot of questions. How much time do you spend on Twitter? Flights and sleeping don't count because you can't do it then. Do you really sleep with your phone? Um, people want to know. They really do. You, uh, for the three of us, um, do you see merit in hiring PR people with promotion of your brand? Do you manage your own social media? I mean, these are a lot of valid questions, I think, that people bring up. Um, I think the moment that you hand off your social media, it becomes dishonest uh, and, um, and disgenuine, and, and people, don't, people don't take to it. The, and they know. And to me, that's really important. I think there's a way to do that. I disagree. I, I think there's a way to do that. And I'll tell you how we do it in, in our office, but I want to get to John's question, which I think is very good. The drawback is to the, your own, it's within your own personal life. It's a time suck. It is a time suck. And when my son looks at me, I mean, it's the it's the That's kind of where I'm going. With the 2013 Four boys, version. nine restaurants, I'm right. kind of consumed. Right. You One have to, wife. You have to discipline yourself. You have to discipline yourself. And my, my wife, when I walk in the door at night, it's no more phones. Phones go off. We actually have a place I have to put it so she, and, <laughs> so she and Noah can see it from the dining room table because they don't trust me, and nor should they, because I'm the guy, my wife, how many, how many? I don't see Chris doing that. How many Twitter addicts, how many Twitter addicts out there have this story? It's like, I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I come back, and my wife can see the glow of my phone underneath the sheet. Uh, it's never good. Um, but I don't want to be constantly married to that thing. And putting it down is very, very, very important. My wife requires um, I get one day on, three days off on vacation to do work of any kind. I'm not allowed to turn the laptop on, phone on, because it dominates our lives with the business calls and all the rest of that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing, though. Chris, what? Is, Chris is right. This is what... This and that's is what why I mean. we, my, my whole actually, point is that it is a commitment. Right. It's a full commitment. And the moment you got to call, like call my I wife. Said, call like I said earlier, I got the comments. What's going on, Chef? Are you okay? Yeah. And they want to make sure, like, what's going on. Yeah. And I just wanted. You oh, sick. I'm just. You were sick this morning. I was sick so this morning. Tweeting. I wasn't tweeting, but no, I kept it easy and I kept it light, you know. And I and I didn't want. And John, you know, brought up something. I think there's a point of it which can people can look at as gloating. People can look mm -hmm. at as, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm on doing a boat. this. I'm, I'm on here. a boat. <laughs> last, Take a good long look. I'm on a boat. Last night, boat. Andrew and I were motorboating the two letter O's <laughs> on food. You know, you put that out there. <laughs> but also, <laughs> what's a, Twitter, here's a good example of what Twitter's great. Uh, you know, Hugh, Hugh and I met through Twitter, okay? And we started a great conversation. And, and because of that, Hugh introduced me to my soon to be publisher. What a great. You know, and I can't say thank you enough to that. But I think that was, that was you know, I think we met through there, and I met Andrew through there, but then if I put a, a dish Well, up your publisher's in for it. Oh, I know. <laughs> but, you know, Andrew will come through town, and I'll get a message on Twitter before I get a message via phone. Direct message, because I know you're on Twitter he knows more I'm than you're on. on your phone. Your phone will ring, and you will ignore it. But you will see a DM that says, I'm at SFO Airport driving I'm up to Napa. I'm do stopping have, by the restaurant. Do you have tomato leaf pasta? Tomato leaf pasta. So it, it, it is such a powerful tool. I mean, it's so much fun. Um, you know, there's a lot of little the hashtags that have secret meanings, that there's groups of people that use throughout the country. Uh, you know, I connect with Jamie Bissonette in Boston, or, you know, there's a whole big group of people who, who can share stuff. I think that, to me, is the best part. I can answer the questions of my customers. Do you think it's important to have a separation between the Kinto as a Twitter account and your own? I, I do have a Twitter account for Encanto that I have granted my uh, chef de cuisine and my pastry chef to take pictures of food right. and put it up, and that's it. It's not a personal place. That's not a place for them to play. Uh, that we always do a very uh, solid description with 140 characters, but we specifically, we have both, but also my, um, I will retweet what Encanto puts up on mine as well. So um, my personal feed is on the restaurant website. My wife, Tatiana, is Meat Maven. She manages Bocalone. So I retweet what she puts out, um, and I think I just kind of, you know, I am what I am, and people kind of expect what I, to get what they get from me, I so I have wanted, to separate I, it. I wanted to be, because you, you raised a really great question about how you actually parcel it out. And I have a, 
very specific problem with that between Andrew Zimmern and Bizarre Foods, one owned by Network, one owned by me, the two really having nothing to do with each other. But I, I wanted to comment on two things before that we didn't circle back on. One is, I do everything myself, but I can't handle, with so many projects going on and so much the, the day to day nitty gritty, that informational thing has to be managed. The other thing that we have benefited from is that social media is a major part of my marketing plan for all the business that I do. Books, magazine articles, speaking tours, demos, sales of product, TV work, web series, everything that I'm in, my social media following is so big. I mean, it's in the millions of people when it's all aggregated. That requires management. You know, the local glossy in our, the, you know, Minneapolis St. Paul magazine, the biggest selling magazine in Minnesota, has 70,000 to 90,000 newsstand issues a month. You know, I, I dwarf that with it, just putting out a message anywhere. And I realized when someone pointed that out to me, it changed the way I thought about it because they said, you have to manage those expectations. So I have somebody who helps me aggregate data and interpret that in but my office. But they're not tweeting for you. No, they're not tweeting That's what for I'm me. talking about. You cannot have someone tweet to you because your fans pick up on that disingenuous stuff That's, right away. They know, when it's, they know when it's me. Second issue with that, sponsored tweets. It's been out there a lot in the news over the last couple months. What happens when um, the, uh, you know, uh, the people at uh, whalepoop.com want to sponsor me on a whale poop recipe for a week? And we're going to sell little four ounce blocks you of whale poop. You eat that? Poop. Absolutely. He'll eat anything. Uh, Goodness gracious. So, the, so you, you, they come to me and they say, we're, we're going to write you a check for X number of thousands of dollars per tweet. And you put that tweet out into your uh, Twitterverse. It is, unless it's handled properly, without a doubt, it can be an overnight brand killer. Because you talk about turning off you know, hundreds of thousands of people with one click on your phone. That's why understanding your audience, that's why I invest in someone to spend a couple hours a week going sifting through everything and seeing what people are doing. Because there, there's a way for us to, what you know, Toyota uh, pays the bills on my web series, Appetite for Life, that airs on MSN. I'm able to tweet about it because we've learned that letting our audience know who's doing it and always including Toyota and all those other people lets them know, and we also use the hashtag spawn, S-P-O-N, lets them know what it is. So like a, a magazine they're thumbing through, oh, ad, they can skip it, or oh, interesting ad, I can look at it and then move on. So it's a very, very delicate balance between them, but that's why I need somebody to manage it. Yeah, I mean, I us. don't even look at those backside things. I've never, I've shut off, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, like I said, dyslexic, ADD, barely graduated high school. When I started doing this, I found that it was something that I was taking control back. I was taking control back of what I was told um, the media controlled. Okay? Now, I'm put in front of every major journalist's face on a regular basis because I put it out there. Right, Brett? Yes. <laughs> I follow you. So He's if I put follow. out a dish, but what it also does is it timestamps dishes. It also timestamps your, your, your evolution. Um, of, of your cooking and what you're doing and you're focusing, but it also just puts me right front and center in front of my peers, in front of the media, which also helps aggregate more. So what happens is, is John likes a dish, makes a comment, retweets it, boom, then some of John's followers likes me, and then it increases. So it's this feeding frenzy off of each other, and Andrew and I talk about that a lot, but one of the first thing I did when I got on Twitter and Instagram is I shut off all the alerts. I don't care. I don't care who's following me. I don't care to get alerts when they comment beep, on me. Beep, because it have beca it, that is the part of that time suck that I, that I took out of being able to control my social media. So yes, is there a gigantic backside to it? What is that thing you get? Uh, you've been rated so-and-so on your mm -hmm. uh, clout, and then you've got your uh, certified follower after you get a certain number. And you know, there's all these things that can, that can benefit you, but I don't. That wasn't my point when I started this. This was a way for me to control my message, control the information. But you turning it off for yourself personally so you can keep your quan at a certain level, your mojo intact and focus <laughs> and ha still have fun with it is different than 
the importance of using it as a marketing plan and actually having a place for it. Because oh, I have a marketing have, plan. Hey, My marketing have, plan is shut all that shit off no, 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 and no. focus on putting out what I want to have no, fun with. You have a marketing plan even though you, when you sit there and you say every night I take a picture of the odds and ends board and then we put a picture of it and that's how we sell out of these limited edition items. That is a sales tool and marketing so plan of, course. of a very profound type. I take that at a, a very, we have meetings within our office every month about what we want to accomplish within social media. People see, I spent 20 years cooking in restaurants. I'm a pretty good cook. Yeah, but everybody thinks of me as an eater. So we've spent the last two years having everything we do go, fall under the umbrella of Andrew is not just an eater. Andrew is not just an eater. So we started doing video on andrewzimmern.com of me cooking and then tweeting that out, pushing that out to our social community to build our website. We've made a major financial investment in our website and have, I mean, it's gone up about 800% in terms of hits. We have andrewzimmern.com. Shameless plug, it's one of the coolest food websites out there. You should go. Uh, it's very cool, it's a cool website. I'm There's not saying it's not. You guys, you want John Besh and Chris Cosentino interviews, recipes, and videos, you can go to andrewzimmern.com. Uh, they're there. Um, Shameless. Thank you, man. Thank you. But it's like, there's, there's a perfect example. But you have to have a used. plan. You, ha you, you have to have a plan because you can, you, can build, you can build audience for your content in a very quick and profound way in social. Well, one of the funny things we started doing at the restaurant, um, we're always short-staffed. It's just the nature of the business. And, and I work a station a lot. And one day, I had a pretty smart mouth cook that decided to say that I'm too old, that I can't do it, that I can't work the station next to them. I'm not fast enough. So I put out a tweet that said, old man on pasta, come fucking challenge me. And I got my ass handed to me, and I buried that little kid. And it was the best. Best learning tool, not only for my staff, but also. I want to apply for a job. But that was that was such a great showing <laughs> of how well social media works. They were like, he's really going to be on a station, and I am. I mean, I'm on a station all the time. I'm always in that restaurant, mm. and but to do that and to see that flip, that instant, like I saw people coming in and they just sat at the bar and would watch, and I wouldn't accept help. I pulled my own plates. I did all my food. I did everything on my own, and people were watching, and then. The tr it just exploded into a Twitter feed explosion of people taking pictures. Holy shit, the old man really is on the line. Now that is fun. That's what it should be. It should be fun. But your fans like that too because that fits your personality. It's different than what John is going to do. His social media, I I'm fascinated. You do you guys day. have, I, yep. I saw that. <laughs> you, you, have, you, day guys, kids. You, have, you have some of the smartest people I know working for you uh, in, in marketing and PR. Do you guys, do they have a plan for you? Do they talk about what they want to do with social? You see, or do they I'm keep it like, a secret from you? And that, that's really been the problem because I've been so anti, Right. just hey, look at what I'm doing. And it's really understanding, and it's been only recently that I've understood now where I want to go with it mm -hmm. and what I want to do. And what I want to do is really connect in a more of a heartfelt way with the people that support me. Mm -hmm. I want to see the farm, put the farm up. Right, and, and so right I'm doing a lot more of that than, as opposed to the, um, you know, for so long, it's just, you no, know, we have to promote this, promote that. Right. Promote, and right. So I'm developing that, separating the John Besh from all the restaurants. Is now, back to Hugh's query, is all about, I have now the chefs promoting themselves in their own right, doing what they do best in their restaurants, and I'm kind of promoting this happy world of, you know, best land. Right, right. So how, how do you balance out what Chris is talking about, which is the extremely spontaneous use of social media with what Andrew's talking about, which is having a, an actual strategic plan and trying to manage those two things together? Because there's also- a Oh, he's got a plan. He's got a plan. <laughs> That's his plan, and she manages <laughs> him. <laughs> but it, to, to your point, the, the nice thing is that, and that's, that's why Chris said it's so important to do your own tweets, because we can come up with this wonderful thing, and if we start pre-write, copy, you know, having someone script things out, Ugh. copyright tweets, it literally falls like a bad egg in the room. I mean, you know it when you open it, crack, sulfur, gross, bad egg. It, it, is, a, it is an absolute uh, brand killer. It's a time what bomb. What we try to do, and, and the, the person who I work, Molly, in my office, who I do all of my creative sort of uh, tinkering with, she makes sure very, very clearly that any, because 
every business that I'm a part of, I mean, everything, the first thing their marketing people say is, we wanna make sure you tweet about it. We wanna make sure you Facebook about it because we have such a large audience at Andrew Zimmern Inc. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy how much they want it. And our big thing now is saying no to people. We won't tweet about it because otherwise all I'm doing is tweeting about products and shows and placements and not giving our audience what they want, which is a connect to fans. Nobody wants a picture of me saying, yo, 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 I'm on a boat. You know, check it out. What they do want is, hey, I'm in the kitchen at Encanto. I did a thing when I visit Chris's. I always, and it, I do it in friends' restaurants. I take pictures of the chef's cookbook collections. I take pictures of the walk-ins. I take pictures of staff meal, the things that everybody wants to see. That's a really, really amazing, you know, powerful thing for them to see. And, uh, and a lot of times it's taking them into aspirationally into restaurants that they want to do. I did a whole series one night of the omakase tasting at Oya when the last time that I was there. And the, the precision and the delicacy of these small little courses, a bite each over the full range of the spectrum up close on Instagram. People were following, the first one I think got a couple hundred uh, hits. By the end of the thing, people were tweeting each other, follow Andrew Zimmern on Instagram, he's doing the that. omakase tasting at Oya. You bring them into a place where it comes from a, a heartfelt place of I wanna share this with you, as opposed to, oh look what I can do, you know? and it's. Being active in it, I think, is the difference. Being active yourself in it, I think. Now, we've talked difference. a lot about sharing information and just like, here, I want the, uh, our base to have this information and understand how, I, you know, how it can benefit us and the restaurants and in all the other commercial interests. But what about, what I do enjoy is the conversation, oh, is yeah. the yeah. ask a question. I was in uh, Tel Aviv. Hey, what's a great place to eat? Right. And all of a sudden I get, you know, in Rome we used it a lot and just shooting it out there and then having Vetri say, well, my friend's right around the corner from you. Stop in. And, you know, and I think you responded. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. So, well, totally. The perfect example of what John's saying is, you know, somebody sees a picture of a dish or they want to ask you a question. Or I get a lot of, chef, I just, got, uh, I just got a whole animal. I got all these organ meats. What do I do with these? And then what we'll do is I'll set it up, I'll communicate that to them, give them a couple ideas, but then also send them to a website that I have called Opal Good, which teaches people how to clean, handle, store, and cook all these cuts of meat. And then you get responses for them of people sending me those dishes that they made from it and what they learned. And that's a pretty cool thing. Mm. You know, there's a direct connectivity to your, your, your guest or to your friends. And, and then that's, I think, we just broke a big wall. We just jumped over a huge wall to the guest. Now they don't have to go through, hey. you don't have to go through all these different people to get to you. They can just send you a 140 character question and you take time and you but, answer them. But it's how in, in today's day and age, it has replaced the phone call and the email. Oh, yeah. If you're following the right people or if the right people, if you're following each other and can DM them, how I produce my show, people say, how do you know what to do in Kuala Lumpur? And it's like, it's easy. I throw out a question on Twitter or on Facebook, or put something right. out in social and say, where should I go? And there's lots of food freaks, you know, public and private, who want to tell me, here's the best place to go get, you know, a great coconut milk shrimp red curry, you know, in Kuala Lumpur. Um, it is- Like when I hit you when I was in Japan. That's right. I hit, when I went to Japan this year for the first time, and I hit Andrew for a bunch of recommendations, or Hong Kong, he sent me to a bunch of different places. But then you start feeding that food out when you're in these it's countries. Insane. People, I mean, I it turns into I don't do feeding Yelp. frenzy. I don't do Yelp for a reason. And you're not high and mighty. You actually need help, too. Of course yeah. we do, but the, the better thing is I'm into crowdsourcing expertise. I don't want to crowdsource bullshit, right? So Yelp for me, we interviewed on my podcast, we interviewed the guy that runs Yelp, and we had a great chat with him. And at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, we fell into t uh, two different point of differences. If I'm going down, if I'm going down to eat to a certain part of the world, I will throw it out there to the people who live there and to the people I follow, and maybe tag a couple of folks. So it would be, you know, John and a bunch of friends I have in New Orleans, Chris and a bunch of friends I have in San Francisco, folks like, you know, Hugh or Richard down in Atlanta and environs, um, you know. The, 
depending on where you're going, that's the place you're going to get feedback. And if you regularly follow people who are in different parts of the world, I don't have to worry about where I'm eating in Rome because I follow Mario Batali. And every day someone says to him, where should I eat in Rome? And he reprints the same seven places. It, it's an amazing tool for traveling, for information, for sharing, for pre-production gathering. I, I find it indispensable. It's the new way the world relates to each other. Yeah. Uh, join and get active and experiment for itself. I mean, you guys are some of the savviest people that I know. Once you're using it for a while, you'll see how your community wants to tie into it. And I think that's really important. And also get your staff involved. We get everyone in my office involved in it because everybody brings something different to the table. You know? I mean, starting off all the beautiful fish that's coming in, don't just take it that it's been butchered prior to being butchered and where it's going to go for the night. And you can kind of phase those pictures along as you're bringing it to the final dish. You know, here's the whole fish came in. Oh, scale, boom, fillet, boop, 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 boop. And people really, that's when they feed. Yeah. And they see how much work you put in to, from that one single ingredient to the final end means. And you know, with your staff, I mean, it's something you put on your website, and then the feed comes up on your site. And they can click on those pictures. Uh, you can put Instagram on your site, and the pictures just boop, boop. We talk about going. unique ability in our office a lot. What's our unique ability? What can we show that other people aren't showing? And there's a lot of stuff that you guys have a lot of very serious unique ability with. So it would be really cool to watch that take off, especially with all the, I mean, the freakish fetization of Japanese food, especially, you know, the raw fish culture and some of the stuff that you do at Oya is, you know, <laughs> only at Oya. So you have some killer unique ability. So please, Make sure that at least you do that mushroom terrine thing that's totally flat that I still don't know how you can possibly cook uh, and put that up so I can copy it. <laughs> you can do both at the same do time. Do it all. Yeah. Instagram and Twitter it. both at the same time. You link them together and you're hitting two. So easy, I can do it. <laughs> yeah. You'll love it. If you're honest, it doesn't have to be. Uh, we have very few untweets, and I am always asking. I'm like, oh my god, I tweet too much. I tweet too much. But, but I really have, think my it, fans have learned to ignore. But it, it also goes back to this whole concept of a cocktail hour that you're having, and you're having drinks, and you're. Do you want to hear? Do you want to talk to that person that never shuts up, that isn't asking any questions, not really engaging you, but just always throwing things out? And no, the truth is, you want to have some interaction. And, and I think the interesting thing is, is that the three of us can, you know, I think the way that we handle various uh, social media outlets are really indicative of our personalities. And, <laughs> and you can list the Chris thing is, is out there like throwing it out, like this is, you know, like in your face and Andrew's sharing it with everybody. And I'm just kind of like standing on the sidelines watching. But your fans will tell you, but your fans tell you. I bet you're already getting a reaction. If you look at your feed and you, if you're active in what, listen to what the people who are following you and who you're interacting with, listen to what they're saying. Right. You know, I hear it all the time. The number one complaint that I get on Twitter is, shut your mouth when you're chewing, you big fat blank, right? <laughs> so I think about that when I'm making my TV show. If you've noticed, the other he's, thing, he's careful about that The now. other thing that I do, the other thing I do is I pay attention to how they're following a certain thread or what I'm doing. And when I'm posting you know, pictures of me on vacation, whatever, nobody cares. Nobody wants to see another pretty picture of a beach. But when I'm at a restaurant and I do four, five, six, seven courses, it literally explodes because people are like, Oh, cool, Andrew's at blank and he's eating, or he's in this country <laughs> touring, or he's in this place doing something. And I know that there's a corollary in your business where people want to see what it is that's going on with you and your fromage. 
Yeah. Now everybody's looking down at their phones. John, tweet, John just <laughs> tweeted me, guys, so don't, don't listen to him. He does really, does really do it. I think sometimes it can aggregate a lot of hate. And I feel. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, John? I'm being honest. I know you're honest. And I it, follow you. And, and <laughs> I think. <laughs> and I eat meat. I eat opal. I'm, look. And I think what, what it does is um, it can aggregate. He pisses off a lot of vegetarians out and there. And you know what? It, it's also knowing, knowing who your followers are and being true to who you are. But I think there are people out there. Now there's been a lot, um, there's been a lot of spam cropping up. Um, it ends up having, it has a tendency to be uh, young children that they're p popping up. Their kids are getting Twitter accounts. They're taking them over and they're just sending out diet stuff, right? You get the diet. Garcinia. Garcinia. Oh, you too? Awesome. I'm wor I've tried it out. It's working great. Uh, so they, they latch onto these kids' Uh, that they don't know how to use it very well or lock it down or have a really bad password, and it, they just start aggregating quite a bit of, of anger. And I think um, it's just learning how to shut that off. You know, That's the one downside I don't like. I don't like the negativity when it should be a positive place. And if, you, like, if it's something about you have uh, a situation where you're unhappy with an experience at the restaurant and you're taking it to that social media world, I think that, that doesn't really help you because you're not fucking there anymore, dude. You already left. You should have spoken to the manager when he was right there, if you had a problem with your well, meal. And you don't like, I know because I follow you and I listen to you, you don't like the gotcha stuff. And I don't think anybody on Twitter likes the gotcha Why stuff. I'm totally, I'm with you. You just say what I, what I filter out, that's all. <laughs> Fuck, I mean, it's, and the only that's difference- That's why we're so good together. The only, <laughs> the only difference is between the Twitter when somebody does that and Yelp is at least there's a face to that Twitter handle. That's the only thing, at least Sometimes. they have enough sand. I am. Wow. I'll, I'll I tell you a good story. It's cool. I've got one for you that'll be really. Um, I had some guests. Actually, you were in the restaurant that night. And Andrew was in the restaurant, and I was cooking for him. And there was a woman a couple tables over who wrote, Well, isn't he fucking high and mighty over there? He can't even walk over and talk to me. So what did I do? I walked right over. I put the phone right in her face, and I was like, Hi, I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it trumped that situation in two seconds. That happens all the time in August. She, oh, yeah. she does. She still comes back. And she apologized to me in front of my staff because it was a really shitty way of addressing it. All she had to do was say, hey, we'd love to say hello. Instead, it became a really nasty comment. And addressing it instantly. So like, I've had guests saying, hey, we're here. We're really excited. And I'll go, I see you on table so-and-so tweeting right now. They look. <laughs> and they do this. And then you're like, OK, I got him. Boom, and then you just, you have fun with it. And that's when it's really fun, and that's when it's really exciting. And, and we do occasionally, um, we, we call a roaming VIP. So we'll just bomb somebody with food. So it may be some guest that said, hey, I'm here, I'm so excited, I came from, you know, first time here, and I came from Hawaii. I've been dying to come, I know you love pork, and we love pork, and we can't get your product, and, and, and I'm like, okay. And I was like, oh, I saw you, and they're like, I'm like, all right, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hammer them. I want this, 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 and this, and it's going to phase out over their meal. And they just get slammed with food. And they're so excited because they're getting, it's a, just like a random VIP treatment to somebody who had enough courtesy to tell me they're excited. And that's fun. Like, that's when I think it's a good time. We also get them, you know, we get them every day of can't wait for the meal. You know, we're coming yeah. in, you know, in a couple of days or next week or so on and so forth. And just... Then having an idea of who they are, when are they coming in, tracing the reservation, and then having something extra. And I think one thing that I do love to do is that kind of like value-added experience for, for our guests and the people that do follow me. And then it's all about offering them that behind-the-scenes look. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, the raw fish and taking it from A to Z and how, you know, offer them something which you, money just can't buy, you know. And, and um, that's, I think, the beauty of just sharing photographs and just I sharing love see, I love seeing story. kids on Vine or using video like TwitVid, posting videos of them doing the Bizarre Foods thing like with broccoli, parents. You know, I, I get teary-eyed. I mean, you see little kids and the parents are like, thank you. 
in the background, photo by me, the kid's going, I'm John, I'm six, I'm eating broccoli. And you know, it goes in the mouth. <laughs> if it looks good, eat it. And it's like, you're like, oh my gosh, this is really, this is cool. Well, I think to the other, to the other coin, um, you know, me talking about really overdoing it for some guests is how do I deal with problems when they come up? I've had guests um, send me messages after a meal and saying, you know, really disappointing. Uh, I was really, you weren't there. Um, and I kind of started dialogue with them offline. You know, I follow them. I start a DM with them. Um, and I, you know, print out what the conversation was, find out what the problem is, address it, and then invite that guest back in. I, I follow both. I have both of them on my phone. I manage both of them. I think it's just tie, tying everybody in and yeah. having, having, this is the mission. Do you and have someone at your restaurant who monitors the restaurant's social media in service and stuff? Which is very different from my own personal. Right, no. I'll convert them to back to the restaurant. Right. But I think... Because we, we have that problem with the show because as, as, as someone who has a, a brand, you know, it's Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmern, the network has a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vine account for Bizarre Foods. I don't know who runs it. I don't know who deals with it. It's all show promotion information. There's no interaction with fans. It's like a giant postcard business card thing. And people confuse that with us all the time and vice versa. So we have a lot, sometimes we have a lot of conflict there just in terms of managing fans' expectations. It's gotta be twice as tough in a restaurant, especially with someone who's a public figure like the three of you guys that people see on TV, in magazines, at events, and you have a restaurant, and you've got the diverse social media accounts. It's a bear. It's, it's really hard when, um, so like, I'll look on what's going on within Conto on the feed that I have, you know, I've set up a tweet logic so I can follow a whole slew of them at the same time. And um, my chef de cuisine has access to it, like I said. He'll alert me if I don't see it. Um, messages will be sent. Most majority of the time they actually come to me, more so than they come to the Encanto account because they know it's me. And there's a relationship. And there's a relationship, and they're willing to communicate that with me. Um, but it's, it's just, if it's a completely ridiculous, you know, offhand really? comment, I don't, you know, I'm really sorry you had that experience. Give us another chance. We'd like to, you know, make it up to you. But when it's serious, I, you know, it's like a full-on management meeting. Well, the worst thing is that response. Exactly. And they get really, <laughs> people get really mad. And yeah. even now, Twitter is now that it's like email. Yeah. You know, it's, it's you got to address it. And um, I, like I said, I answer questions about how to work with me. Or, you know, I had a problem with this. Hey, I got this kidney and it really smelled funny at this restaurant. Should I have eaten it? Because I feel sick today. I'm like, I don't know what restaurant you ate it at, but I wouldn't have eaten it. You know, it's, but it's funny because they get, they want response. They really, they, they, they follow you for that reason. And they think that's the biggest part of it. You have to be genuine and honest. it to be that bad. I don't. How um, many haters do you have versus likers? Well, let's see. PETA is the number one. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, listen, we, I view it in a, a, a very different way. I kind of don't focus on how many people are the hatred. I'm trying to look at and view things in a very different way. I'm trying to focus only on the positive that comes through it. And if the negative is about an experience at the restaurant, I address it. If it's just somebody being an asshole, well, you know what? There's a lot of assholes in the world, and we can't change them. So I'm not going to let that one guy or one gal who you know thinks they are you know better or can tell me something that about myself. But it's that, that it's that negative piece that I I sift for. I'm looking for that. I want to see if there is something negative about any one of the restaurants. I want to know about yeah. it so that I, you know. But that stuff is what I'm trying. And that's to where I think it yeah. really becomes useful. But not the stuff about the like, hey, I don't like your haircut. Your glasses are fucking ugly. Like, who really cares about those things? And there is that. There is a lot of that, but that's not worth even bothering. It's only the, the, the genuinely honest critique of the restaurant and yeah, a, a meal or an experience. Those are what I focus on to correct. I don't care about all the, the extraneous BS. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that, we used to have that ages ago, it seems. It was like several years ago. Now I think everybody's pretty savvy to the point that, you know, we're changing menus all the time. Food's evolving. Yep. And, um, you know, and I, and I don't use the fax machine any longer. Do you know what we get a ton of? I, I kid you not, and I, I wasn't joking before. I mean, you know, these guys are, it's, it's, it's not a secret. We're friends away from all this stuff. But we do work stuff together, and we've had both of them doing things on our website or in my TV show or when I'm just dining at their places and I tweet pictures. And we see a week, a month later, slews of email, like on a holiday weekend. We went, we, we circled, we made a reservation in August. We made a reservation in Wisconsin. And you see great feedback from people. I think it's in a fantastic marketing tool because, you know, if, if John is in, you know, at the Kentucky Derby, and he's in Louisville, and he tweets like, "Hey, we had a great meal at such and such." People are like, "Oh, okay, I'm go I'm going to go there." Um, and Perfect people example. People put it on their list and utilize it. They're crowdsourcing that expertise. I don't think they're analyzing it too much. I think they're using it the way it, it sort of should be used that way. I mean, food. When you take pictures of food, okay, usually at the beginning of service, right? You're putting it somewhere where the light's good, where uh, it's before service happens. And they're getting a dish, the light's different, right, for starters, because they're probably coming in at night, and you're taking it at usually 4.30 because you're doing your pre-meal, and that's when you have the moment to take that picture. Of course it's gonna look different, and, but it doesn't mean it tastes different, you know? They don't know what it tasted like before, so they're coming in with preconceived notions of what their experience should be. And I think what Andrew's talking about, I, I think is a great example, is you know, when we did uh, On the Road, right, and you came in and you got the first in Canto, it's true. So I now serve a dish served in a can. In a can, you know, and it's not. It's not nothing I created. Martin Picard from Apia de Cochon taught me how to do it, and he stole it from the United States government, who created it for World War II. So no, you know, no harm, no foul. And we put pork and beans, which is what I grew up with as a kid. So there's beans, big crispy piece of pork belly, and it gets poured on toast, right? Table side, my, my servers do it table side. <laughs> Open the can, pour it on top of the toast, and it it aired. And it was a floodgate opened. People wanted the cans to take home. They wanted to buy it to go. It, it was crazy. So I mean, that's, that's when it's really fun. You know, that's, that's when you see those great, you know, great happenings. Like, you know, pictures of pigskin spaghetti with you. And mm -hmm. again, boom, those things explode and people like it's it. It's really good. Right, and that kind of, I, I like to use it as a tool to, to highlight people, certain people that I love and, and respect, and just like the, the scholarship, the foundation that we have. You know, we sold, you know, we had some problems this Memorial Day weekend, it was a very slow weekend in New Orleans, and uh, we wanted to sell out. And so via Twitter, and, you know, we sold it out immediately, uh, you know, those remaining tables and so on, so just by telling a story of what this foundation is doing. And the poor, you know, the poor kids that will benefit from it, and so that's when I think, okay, it has this. I, I just want to always have this kind of um, <laughs> filter that says, you know, is this is it valid? Is this worthy? And so we have this kind of worthy factor that, you know, before I send it, you know, it really needs to be worthy, and using that in such a way to to make good things happen. I'll you give you a, a handy you have a filter. I'll give you a I, handy phrase. I don't have that filter. <laughs> I'll just, give you one. I'll give you one. Is it true? Does it need to be said? And if it's true and needs to be said, is it up to me to say it? And that's what we ask ourselves with almost every single thing that we do. And the, when we make a mistake, it's because we didn't pause enough to think about, is it true? Does it need to be said? And if it's true and needs to be said, is it up to me to say it? Now, to your point, the greatest thing, I think, about the platform that we've been given by the fans and the people who love food and love to see all that stuff is the ability to reach down and pull somebody else up and do something. Danny, I use the, I 
DM Danny Meyer, the head of Union Square Hospitality Group. He may go places in the restaurant world, we'll see. Uh, he's from St. Louis. So I sent him a DM about a week before I we went to shoot there. I said, any place I shouldn't miss. We were going to do uh, pig snoots. And we're, there's three or four places that do them fantastically in St. Louis. It's the actual snout. They cut away the tip, cut away the skin. They shave out this little fatty muscle. They lay it flat and cure it for a day and then barbecue it crispy. It's insane, pig snoot. Well, insane. So he right, said, right. of all the places to go, you should go to Smokey O's. And I, DM, I said, why Smokey O's? And he says, because Otis and Erlene only hire kids in the neighborhood who've had trouble with the law, and they teach them life skills, and some of them have to sleep in the restaurant for the first couple of days, but they do things within that community for the last 45 years, because all three places do great ears, but uh, noses, but there is a, a better story there, the people there. And I told him when I saw him, I haven't seen him, we just shot, shot St. Louis in March, I haven't seen him since then. And I went up to him the other night at a, an event that we were at together, and he said, what'd you think? And I said, wait till you see it. And we both looked at each other, and he said, it's so beautiful that you're able to tell the story of those people and what they do because of what they do for their community. You feel so good. In a world that's just filled with so much me, me, me-ism and look at me, I'm on a boat, that's cool. To find a slick little restaurant, to get, the reason why I went to Willie Mae's Scotch House for the first time in Dookie Chase's was because of all of my friends in New Orleans, like John, who were like, here's where you gotta go. That's, I just think that's the coolest thing in the whole world. And that democratization, thanks to our digital revolution, is what has allowed everybody to, par to participate right. in that. I went to Perla because of your crappy Instagram pictures <laughs> from there, but I still wanted to go. I still wanted to go because what you were saying about the food, I know you dine out a lot. You, I know the restaurants you eat in. I know the people you work with. I'm like, wow, if you're that impressed with it, I got to go. So I went. I took Bourdain there for dinner, and the two of us walked in and asked for a table for two, and they just about shat their pants. And they get a lot of, they get a lot of people in there, but they do the, they copy you. They do a pig head with a knife in the thing, you know, whatever, and tried to bring us one, and we said, no, no, no. Um, but it is, it's one of those things, like that's how the gospel spreads of those places. I mean, that's just, that's just how it works. I love it when good Jewish boys talk about the gospel. <laughs> what? This is great. <laughs> Shalom, y'all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, I try, to, um, I try to work with a lot of local uh, smaller farmers, and I spend a lot of time with them. Um, one of them is Marikita Farms, and I really try to promote who they are and what they are and what they do. Right. Um, and it, that to me is, if without them I'm useless, I, I'm, I, I have nothing, you know? And, you know, smaller farmers, you know, some of these smaller farms nowadays in the Bay Area, their children are eligible for food stamps. It's kind of, kind of a screwed system. So I try to promote to other chefs to buy from these guys, like, hey, look at this crazy new Japanese uh, pickling melon that... Uh, Andy's growing, you should buy it from him. He's got a bumper crop. He's got 250 pounds he needs to unload. And it will, it will quickly, through the chef community that I have in, in, the, in the Bay Area, they all follow that and then they all start making phone calls. Or can we add on to your order and we can all come pick it up from the restaurant because they don't normally buy from Andy. And I think that to me is, is, is a great part of it. You know, I, I work with the Michael J. Fox Foundation. I try to really help and promote the Michael J. Fox Foundation through Twitter and, and, and help um, him, you know, with one, promote his new show, uh, raising awareness about the new medicines that are coming out for Parkinson's disease. Um, it, it really, you hit a lot of people and they really respond to it. And it's, it does make a change. I mean, honestly, you say you wonder if people really give a shit what you have to say, and that's a perfect example of that it does. People do really care. They want to know, you know, why we believe in it, why we're willing to stand up. Well, John, for those. John is too humble. But when we called up and we were going to go down and do the show with him, it's like we throw a thousand ideas of what we can do to do a, tell a story about John Besh. And what John Besh's response was, let's do a story about Chappapila Farms and ducks and how this is changing the community that I really want to support and want to change. And that became a better story, you know? And we got a chance to do that. So we cooked and now, duck and testicles for we did, we did, five we, different we ways. We ate some balls. We ate some balls. But the fact of the matter is, is that Chappapila, and we follow this stuff, Chappapila, and wait till the, you know, <laughs> wait till the thing airs. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, Chappapila, which is a, a, you know, a farm that is, you know, that is new. Year old? Yeah, about a year old. About a year old. What it's going to do for that community to see that story and communities around the country are going to say, wow, if they can do it down there, 
we can do it too, is, is, is a right. big changer. And that's the power of social media uh, as well, because they're, they're latched onto it. And everyone can, you can hook up your car to the train. That's the great thing about social media, is that the multiplier is immense. Bless you. One last question, because we're out of time. I want to be respectful to the next group in here. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I don't I have no idea whether Twitter adds to the SEO portion of it or not. You type in Ophel Chris or uh, at you type in your Twitter handle on that, it's the boom comes right to the top. First thing. Okay. Twitter handles are very powerful. Um, they all aggregate them really quickly. Okay. So that will really yeah. help your SEO. And and we do everything. I mean I I mean we haven't talked about it a lot, but we do Pinterest and Tumblr and I mean we in our, we do everything. We have a presence What's everywhere. What's that one? Food Spotting. Yeah. Chef Find. Good Lord. Yeah. We do it all. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Thanks to all. Amex. John Besh, Chris Costantino. These are awesome. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Oh, I love you. Here's a good one. Oh, Here's the